Thank you for coming to the Student Org Training Day. This is something we do annually. And there we go. So we're the Student Involvement and Leadership Center. We are located in Suite 400 here in the Union. So it is on this floor just past the elevators. There's like a lounge space right there and a front desk and that's Silk. So if you ever want to come see us in person, that's where we are located. Um, I think all of you checked in with Emily when you came in, correct? Okay, excellent. Um, then we do not need this QR code. So let's introduce the staff. All of these smiling faces, except for Madison, will be up here in front of you today. Um, I'm Jennifer Sprague. I'm the assistant director in the Student Involvement and Leadership Center. Our director and fearless leader is Sarah Bowman there in the back. And we have Grant Clayton. He is our program coordinator. Uh, Madison Orange, she is our online moderator today. We do have people joining us online. Um, and Emily McBride is the one who checked you in. She's at the back and she is our communication specialist. So if you've been following us on social media, that magic is Emily. <laughs> Okay, so we are just going to do a brief rundown of what we're going to cover today um, in this training day. So first off, we're going to go through Rock Chalk Central nuts and bolts, essentially how to leverage Rock Chalk Central to benefit you and your student organization. Um, we'll discuss available silk workshops and spot meetings. Um, our friends from the union will join us. Um, they're going to discuss room reservations and KU catering. Uh, and then Sarah will discuss um, Rock Chalk Central event submissions using the Cork app in our event check-in app for your student organization. Then Emily will share some marketing and social media tips with us. We will cover funding available to you on campus. Um, and then we will close it out with any questions and a brief survey. And while you're taking the survey, we will randomly select attendees, both in-person and online for our KU giveaways that we have in the back. They're all on that table if you wanna take a quick look. <laughs> Okay, so I will go ahead and turn it over to Grant Clayton, our program coordinator, and he's going to discuss Rock Chalk Central Nuts and Bolts. All right, thank you, Jen. Um, so I'll be up here for a little bit just to talk to you all about um, the Nuts and Bolts of Rock Chalk Central and just to give you a brief overview of how you can utilize the platform to really better your student organization. So um, we'll go ahead and go over a little bit about Rock Chuck Central, um, some of the key features such as managing your roster, using messaging, um, running forms on there, and also conducting your elections. Then we'll discuss some of the workshops that we have available for you to use for your student organization to help train your leaders. Um, and then we'll go over our spot consultations, which is our group of student leaders that you can meet with for various things. So first we'll go over Rock Chuck Central management. So this is what the home screen of Rock Chalk Central is going to look like every time that you log in. Over on the left-hand side, you'll be able to see all the different organizations that you have, as well as the tools that you can use to manage them. So to begin managing your organization, you'll go over to the left-hand side. You'll hover over whichever club that you're wanting to manage. Um, you'll click on it, and then you'll select whichever of the tabs, like About, Roster, Events, ETC, for whatever feature that you're wanting to utilize. So managing your roster. So if you click on the roster tab, which is one of the most important tabs that you have available to you, this is what it's going to look like. So you'll be able to see all of your different members. You can add different positions as well as edit positions that you have for your members. Um, so you can view any member that you have. You can also search for them. If you have um, a lot of different members, you can search by name or by position to be able to filter those. And then you can also end any individual membership for a single member if they leave the organization for any reason. Um, as well as you can take a couple of different people off the roster or add them to the roster if you need to. So if you click at the top on the manage positions button, this is where you're able to set all the different positions that your organization has. Um, so Rock Chalk Central is going to come with a couple of pre-built positions that we require you to have, such as president, vice president, and treasurer. But you have the ability to go in and customize different positions for your organization based on what they need. Um, so you just click the add position button at the top. And then over here, you can access every different position you have. If you click on each individual position, you can go in and you can customize what features that position has to access your page. So let's say 
you wanted um, someone to be able to look at your roster and look at your forms, but you didn't want them to have access to your elections or whatnot, you can click on one of their on these positions and you can go in there and you can turn off those permissions so that they only have access to specific things if they hold that position. Um, so on here, um, at the top, there's a button that says invite people. So if you're wanting to invite members to join your organization, you'll click invite and it'll take you to this big box that's over on the right hand side of the screen. Um, from there, you can enter up to 500 different email addresses to add up to 500 people at a time to your organization. When you're adding people to your organization, it's important to use their alphanumeric emails, such as it's got a letter, three numbers, letter, three numbers. If you don't add them that way, it will not correctly add them to Rock Chuck Central and they won't be able to access your features. Um, so anytime you do that, that's how you want to put it in. You can add up to one email address per line um, and you'll just keep hitting enter until you add whoever you want to add. And then you'll just click at the bottom, add addresses, and it'll invite those people to your organization. If you click on the pending tab, such as what shows on the left hand side of the screen, that'll show you all the invitations that you've sent to people that are still waiting to be accepted. Um, so you can see here there's two different people that were invited to this organization. Um, well, it looks like one with two email addresses, but it'll also show the date that they were invited so you can keep track of that. If you click on the perspective tab that's going to show any member that's requested to join. Um, one of the good things about Rock Chuck Central, our students have the ability to see all the organizations that we have on our campus, and they can click on them and view your description, your summary, and what you're about, and then they can request to join that organization if they find it interesting. If you look at the perspective tab and it has a red number over it, that means you have someone who's requested to join your organization. You can then go and approve or deny them to join your organization, or you can click on their name and it'll show you their email and you can shoot them an email and let them know more, or you can discuss um, how to get involved with the organization. All right, so next we'll talk about messaging. So messaging is a great feature that you have access to via Rock Chalk Central. Um, so from this tab, you can send messages to your organization. You can send it to all members or just specific members of your organization, as well as you can send it to all um, position holders in your organization, or you can select certain positions to get those messages as well. Um, these also send as a relay. So what that means is that it's actually going to give you an email address and you'll type up your email in Outlook and you'll send it to that email. And then from there, it's going to email all of the people that um, are filtered underneath these different categories. Um, so on here, um, if you go to the roster page at the top, you'll see the messaging button. So that's what you'll click. And it's going to take you to the message relay screen. And from there at the top, you'll click that blue plus button. And then you can go ahead and begin your messaging. Um, so on here, it's going to ask you to give a title. So that title is going to be the subject of your email. So you want to make sure that that says um, exactly what you would want to show up in the subject line. And then you can select different position holders that you'd like to send it to. Um, there's also a select all if you want to send it to all different positions from your organization. And then on the right hand side of that, instead of doing position holders, you can do it specific members. So you can just click, I want to send it to all members, or you can click, I just want to send it to a couple of different people. And then once you've done that, um, you'll go to the bottom and then you'll be able to go ahead with that. Yes. Um, you go to the roster tab, and then it'll be at the top of the roster. And you click you click the messaging button that's at the top of that roster tab, and then you click the blue plus button, and it'll get you to this page. All right, any other questions on that feature over here? Okay. So um, once you've created your messaging system, it will pop up with this message relay email address. So that's the email that you want to copy. So you'll copy that, then you go to Outlook, you'll type your entire message in Outlook, and then you'll send it to that email. And then from there, um, once it's received at that email address, it's going to automatically do what's called a forward. It's going to forward it to all those different emails you had, and it's going to relay that message to them. So you don't have to type in all those email addresses individually. So next we'll go over forms. So forms is a great feature you have access to um, through Rock Chuck Central. So on forms, you can design um, and customize different forms for your members to complete, depending on whatever you need to do. Um, you can set it to approve and deny different forms if you would like to give approval um, for different forms you're having. Or if you would just like to collect like general information, you don't need to approve or deny it, you can select it to receive forms instead. So where they don't have to be approved, they just automatically get sent to you and you'll be able to see all those without them having to be approved or denied. 
You can then also view individual submissions and you can also export all the info from those forms. So you can just have it on one Excel sheet. So um, on this tab, this is the forms tab on here. You can view all the different forms that have been created and that are saved for your organization. You can't delete any forms. They automatically, if you want to delete it, the best you can do is archive it so that you can see it again in the future. Um, but up at the top, you'll click those three little buttons and then you'll be able to create form or do a bulk archive or a bulk restore for it. Um, to be able to view those forms, all you have to do is just click on whichever form you're wanting to look at. And then it'll take you to a page that looks like this. Um, from here, you'll be able to see all the different people who have submitted a form. So you can see here, um, all of these forms were received, which means that this form was not one that needed to be approved or denied. It was simply one that was just collecting information. Um, if you'd like to view specific responses for it, you can click the little view button at the side and it'll pull up the form in its entirety. Um, so forms is a pretty robust feature, so we won't do the entire thing right now. If you would like to learn more about forms, at the end, we'll have a, a link you can uh, scan to set up a meeting with one of our spot members, and they'll be able to walk you through all that. So next, we'll go over elections. Um, same, same thing goes for elections. It's a pretty robust feature, so we'll, um, if you want to learn more about what I discussed, you can set up a consultation with our spots to go over that. But with elections, you can create different customized elections to reflect all the open positions your organization has. You can also elect new leaders based around whatever your constitution says or your official positions that you have. And then you can also track the results of all of the different elections if you use this feature. So when you go to the elections tab on there, this is what it's going to pull up. So you can include instructions on how your members can vote or what they need to do to vote, um, something like that. You can set start dates in in times um, so that way you can have your your election start at a certain time as well as end at a specific time you can also place an alert on the organization's homepage so that it'll alert your members whenever they view it that there's an election going on and then you can also restrict voting to only include members that are part of your rock chalk central roster if you don't do that then that's going to let any person that is logged into KU's rock chalk central platform vote on it so I highly recommend you turn that on if you do not want that to be the case so um, on here, once your elections have started and you've started receiving different things, um, this is what it'll look like. So you can see the results. Um, so like on the bottom left hand corner, you'll be able to see the different results of elections, um, such as how many counts there were and what the percentages were for those votes. Um, you'll also be able to view the different ballots, such as if you want to have different positions open, you can create different positions on there and you can also submit um, the people that are running for those positions. Um, and then this is where you'll click on the alert feature to let people know that it's happening. And then you can also copy that link that's down at the bottom and you can also send it to your members as well um, to say this is an election going on. Please go click on this link and vote. So next we'll go over the different workshops that we offer. So what are Silk Workshops? So the workshops we offer are different presentations for all of our student organizations and campus departments. Um, these workshops cover a variety of different things such as how to use the Cork app, how to manage Rock Chalk Central, um, and a whole bunch of other things that we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, these workshops typically will run from anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes, depending on how many questions there are and just how much our presenter likes to talk. Um, so on here, you can, there's, you, can, you can do them for the entire organization, or you can select to just have them for your organization's officers, or if you have specific committees in your organization, you would like to have this information, you can also set it up for those committees um, in specific. Um, and then these are designed to help your organization learn and develop its leadership. So um, depending on what you're wanting to get out of it, we can work with you to kind of customize that presentation a little bit to really help make the most out of it for your leaders. So what's on the plate? So this is a listing. Yeah, I did this myself. It's beautiful, isn't it? Um, so this is a list of all the different workshops that we offer. So we offer workshops such as how to manage your social media um, and grow your platform as a brand. Um, how to host elections, as well as transition those leadership positions, how to use the Cork app and how to check people into different events you might host. Um, there's also one about event planning. So we'll talk to you about how to set up events, create Rock Chalk Central events, and really go about them. Um, we also offer a workshop that goes over constitutions and bylaws, where you can learn what your constitutions need to have, um, how to build your constitution, and how to use your constitution to really um, 
guide your organization. And um, then we also offer student org finance overview, which is an overview of the different financial systems that your organizations have access to, as well as how to have good fiscal management as an organization. Um, so if any of those sound interesting to you, you can set up a consultation or a presentation on our website and you'll be able to go about that. Um, so this is the booking tab here. So if anyone's interested in doing those, you can scan this QR code or you can talk to me after and we'll get you in touch with it. Um, so on here, you'll be able to learn all about managing your organizations and develop its leaders. Um, so again, that'll just be set up through one of our spots and they'll conduct this for you. So next we'll talk about spot. So what is SPOT? So SPOT is our Silk Peer Outreach Team. So this is a group of students like yourselves that are involved in different student organizations and really know how to help students get the most out of being involved as well as managing their organizations. Um, anytime you give us a call or you shoot us an email, our SPOTs are going to be the ones that are responding to it. Um, they also help manage Rock Chalk Central. So like if you're submitting registration for your organizations, our SPOTs are most likely going to be the ones reviewing that. And then they also help students get involved. Um, so we offer one-on-one -on -one consultations and our SPOTs are the ones that host those. Um, they can help you with different things such as managing your organization, doing the registration, marketing your organization, and then finding opportunities to get involved. So um, on the flip side of the presentations we talked about with the workshops, we have the one-on-one -on -one opportunities. So in these, our spots can sit down with you for 30 minutes or so, find out what you're interested in. They can help you get involved in different activities. Or if you just have questions about managing your organization, um, such as how to do registration, what does my constitution need to have? Um, just any questions like that, you can set up a consultation with our spots and they'll sit down with you and work through whatever, um, whatever you're wanting to know. Um, so again, if you're interested in doing that, you can scan this QR code or get with me after, and I'll show you how to go ahead and set up one of those consultations. These links are also on our website, so you can go ahead and just go to silk.ku.edu, and you'll be able to find them on, on there. So next, I'm going to pass it over to our catering and event services team, and they'll talk to you about all their stuff. Thank you. Okay. It's straight up copy paste. I know. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, hi. So my name is Alex Jeffries, um, and this is Cody Murray. Um, I'm going to tell you about me a little bit, and then let him talk. Uh, tell you about him for a little bit, and then we'll kind of go through what we do and what makes us successful, what helps make us successful for you guys, and help make you guys successful with us too. So um, my name's Alex, like I said, um, I'm originally from Texas, moved here five years ago for grad school, and thought I'd leave, and then I never did. So um, I'm still here, and I love it. Lawrence is a great town, and so um, I've been working in this position for just over a year, and um, have really enjoyed it. So go ahead, Cody. Awesome. Um, I'm Cody Murray. I am the event services uh, catering and event services coordinator. Um, I went to undergrad here and I was very involved with mil multiple different student groups um, with SUA, um, the big event, BOCO, all sorts of groups. Um, so I have been very heavily involved with just all sorts of student life. And now I am graduated. And so I have been working with a lot of the student groups doing their um, chapter meetings, weekly meetings, events, and stuff like that. So you've probably actually talked to me um, if you're a student leader. Um, and yeah. Okay. So I did want to mention, um, you'll see at the top, this top email, so yeah, it's, we do have our own personal emails on there, but the best way to get a hold of us, because we do have a third part-time worker, her name is Peyton and she's great. Um, if you want to contact us, the best way to get a hold of us is going to be that event services at ku.edu. Um, you can also try calling that phone number. We're, we're unfortunately pretty hard to get a hold of via phone just because we're not always sitting at our desk. So um, if you want to shoot us an email, um, we're going to show you on the next slide exactly what to include in that email. If you need anything, um, room reservations or catering, um, that way you guys have that information. But that's the easiest way to get a hold of us at this time. Um, we are hopefully opening up some online portals for you guys um, to be able to use to go in and um, just submit requests directly into our reservation system. Um, we're still working out some of the kinks with that, so it's not available yet, but um, we will make sure to let um, all, all the folks in the Silk office know so that they can blast that out to y'all too and let you know when that's available. So uh, next slide. Okay, so this list looks really boring. 
but this is exactly what we need. So if you send us an email or a request and you are asking for an event, if you don't have all of these details, we will likely stop you and then re-ask you all of these questions. So that's why we are sharing it with you now. Um, don't feel like you need to write this down. We have them on paper. So I'll leave some of these for you. We can also just email these to you if you can't remember them. Um, but like I said, if we don't have this info, um, we're going to have to ask it, you for it anyway. Um, I think the biggest thing right now is for you guys to make sure that if you have any um, fellow students that are making reservations, make sure that that person is registered as an officer in Rock Chalk Central. If they're not, that's also going to hold up your process a little bit um, because we're going to have to say, hey, you need to reach back out to Silk and get yourself um, registered as a student officer. Um, let's see. Does anybody have any questions? about any of these bullet items since they're right there. Okay, do you have anything to add with that? Mm -hmm. Nope. You will see at the bottom, um, catering requests. We do need those at least 12 days in advance and those are business days. So it's it's more like a two week mark. Um, just because right now, I'm sure you guys have heard or have seen, um, catering is kind of struggling with the staff at the moment. Um, we're hiring all the time. So if you need a job, they definitely would, we would definitely chat with you about that. Um, but try to submit those 12 business days in advance. And then if your headcount is gonna change, whether that's for catering or your room setup, please let us know that for business days in advance as well. So, okay, we're gonna tag team these. So these are our event uh, FAQs. Uh, we, they, they're kind of the points that, that maybe we see get, uh, trip people up more more often than not. And again, don't feel like y'all need to write this down because it's on the back side of that same sheet. Um, so the first thing, cancellations must be made 24 hours in advance. If you have a Saturday, Sunday, or Monday cancellation, you need to do that by 3 p.m. the Friday before because our office hours are 8 to 5 a.m. Monday through Friday. So if you cancel on a Saturday for a Monday, unfortunately, um, you, you might get marked as a no-show rather than a... Um, than as a cancellation, so. Um... Great. <laughs> um, what happens if I need to change my room setup? Uh, special room setups need to be requested no later than 72 hours uh, before the event. Extra labor charges may be assessed for extraordinary large uh, last minute changes, um, especially like in the ballroom when you originally requested theater seating, and then you show up and you're like, well, I really want rounds of eight for the 300 people that I'm gonna have. That, that means that we have to, completely uh, reshift what we're doing. We may have already planned for the next event to have theater seating um, and it just really, it might cause some bumps in our staffing and um, the next person's event even as well. Um, yeah. Next one. And actually do you wanna go back to the cancellation? Um, you will, um, the, the main issue um, with not showing up um, or being marked as a no-show is we start to have to give warnings with that just because of what he just mentioned. If we've set up a space for you to have a bunch of tables or a bunch of chairs or whatever, or maybe we took all of our tables and chairs out, um, that's manpower that has been spent doing that. Um, and, and nobody wants to lift a bunch of chairs and tables for no reason. So um, that's part of why we, we request that that stuff um, does get canceled in a timely manner. So um, that on that note, three no-shows in a semester um, does result in losing reservation privileges for that semester. So um, just keep that in mind if you do need to cancel. Uh, and then the next one, can I bring glitter or tape things to the walls? So we can't have glitter, confetti, anything that sticks into the carpet, anything that you don't want in your own carpet at home, don't bring it here. Um, and then we do not allow anything to be stuck to the walls just because um, we have to keep them nice and um, glue, tacks, uh, even that sticky tack, um, those can all leave residues or um, puncture marks or whatever it might be um, that makes it um, kind of help hurts our building. So um, next one. What if my event needs to go outside of the union's operating hours? You um, want to have a movie night, but everyone's not available until 10 o'clock that night. Um, well, you can request that we stay open for your event. Um, it is $100 per hour outside of those hours. Um, and those can be found, our, our business hours can be found um, at that link below. Or if you Google it, it's on the, um, you can literally find it no matter where you look on our website. Um, 
but we need those requests at least two weeks prior. Uh, we have to schedule um, our building managers or we have to uh, schedule uh, the custodians because you decided you also want pizza. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of pizza boxes. Um, we just need to be able to accommodate it and give you the best services on our side so that you can do the best uh, event that you can on your side. Yeah. Um, and then we can also do something that's called selective opening. Um, so right now, um, all of our spaces are closed on Sundays. So if you um, know that you need a Sunday event, you can do that. Again, we do need a little bit of a heads up for that. Um, and it is a $500 selective opening fee. So um, so that's something to consider as well. Um, regarding snacks for your meetings or your events, um, we do not allow outside food or beverages within the unions. Um, that said, like I said before, we're really, really struggling with staffing right now. So there are exceptions that are made. Um, that said, we do need you guys to fill out the food exemption forms if that's going to be something that we need to move forward with. But you can always ask us. And if we're not able to help you out, we'll let you know and we'll give you those forms to fill out as well. So. Um, that's part of that two week buffer that we need to though, because um, that form closes two weeks before the selected event date. So um, then you have to fill it out on a PDF instead. And that's not as easy as the clickable for link. So. Awesome. Uh, where can I promote my event or organization around the unions? We have two public bulletin boards in the union. Um, the first one is on this floor in between the bathroom. Well, there's that one. There the, the I guess three. They're in between the bathrooms, uh, down the hallway, and then if you go to the farthest exit in between the doorways from the outside to the inside, there's another bulletin board there. And then the third one is downstairs to the right of KJHK where the water fountain is. Um, we do typically look through those bulletin boards every Friday for past events to clean those out and make room for the new ones. Um, if you leave them around the building, they will be thrown away and you will probably receive an email about, hey, here's the bulletin boards. <laughs> um, and so we just uh, prefer that you keep all of your materials there. Um, if you would rather be in person to hand out your flyers, there's also tabling opportunities out on Jayhawk Walk um, or outside as well. Um, and those can be reserved through our office as well. Um, there's some rules on that, but that is another opportunity for you um, to be in person and hand out things. Yeah, and we also have recently taken over um, the booth that is right next to the uh, bus station on Jayhawk Boulevard. Um, so you can also reserve that space. We do have some external um, display board cases that can be utilized as well. So um, if you're if you're curious about any of the spaces in this building, the Burge or DeBruff Center, please let us know, or the booth off, out on Jayhawk Boulevard. Um, I also help, or we also do, um, Danforth Chapel reservations. Um, it is free from five to six for student groups Monday through Thursday. So if that's something that you're interested in, we can talk through that too. Um, but yeah, basically we are here to help you guys have really cool events. Um, if you're not sure what kind of setup that you need, or you're not sure uh, maybe what makes sense in what space, you can always um, come hop on our calendars or shoot us an email and we'd be happy to meet or just chat with you and get those things worked out. So uh, any questions? Us? Yes. Um, so we're catering um, whenever we like actually pay for catering, how does that work? Yeah, so some people, um, depending on your situation, some groups are able to um, finance that. So say you, you yourself want to pay for um, your your group to have popcorn or something and um, as far as I know you're welcome to do that and if I'm wrong correct me um, but if you're wanting Pepsi funding that's something that you will need to go through the student affairs office for so um, what we do ask hmm? or, or senate or silk okay funding they'll get you so but they'll get to funding yeah yes so if you are going to have it funded they'll tell you about that, but um, we would request that you try to get that um, quote from us or get the event on the books from us first, 
uh, first of all, so that you know exactly what you're going to get charged because um, you can see our prices online, but student groups get 15% off. And then there's also a service fee that so there's just different costs that you may not take into account when when submitting that to um, get funding. Um, and the other reason is because of that short staffing situation, I'd rather get you on the books and then cancel and then not have to worry about you not being able to have your your food at your event. So um, what other questions? Yeah. Are the hours are included in the website for the overnight hours? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So this building is 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through for Saturday. And then the Burge is 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. Monday through Friday. And then 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday. And then the DeBruce Center, I can never remember because it's never consistent <laughs> from what I can remember. Each semester, it's a little bit different, but they should all be online correct. Yeah. Any other questions? And then also, if you guys want to use um, the Danforth Chapel, um, it is available for all use, all religions, all all kinds of things. You just don't obviously destroy the space. Um, it's a really really cute chapel for for all groups to use, um, and it is open from eight to five to the public from eight to um, eight to five Monday through Thursday um, for everybody. So I can't guarantee that someone else won't be in that space, but you're all welcome to use that too. Um, if there aren't any more questions, I will leave a stack of these sheets, which have basically everything that we already talked about um, on them. So um, hopefully that helps with everything and we appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> and do you care if I just leave these like here or where do you want to put them? Back? Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Cody. Okay. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so, uh, as was announced at the beginning, I'm Sarah Bowman. I'm the director of the Student Involvement Leadership Center, and I apologize. I have a cold, so please bear with me. It has been a week, so uh, we're going to try and get through this. Um, so, I'm going to talk to you about uh, what happens after you've got your student organization all set up and and everything configured on Rock Chalk Central, just like you want it. Your roster is all ready to go. You've been building some forms, taking some polls with your group. You've met with uh, events, uh, the events team, and you've made some reservations, and you've got some plans for some events. Well, now how do you advertise it? How do you get the word out? How do you keep track of who attends your event? I'm going to show you that part, okay? And just as a reminder, uh, there are still snacks and drinks in the back. Please help yourself as we go. Uh, definitely want this to be as enjoyable as possible, also informative at the same time, right? So, all right. Who can create events on Rock Chalk Central? Uh, the access to do so is contained within, that's a door, contained within your primary contacts or positions that are granted full access. But if you have, if you are wanting to be the person to create an event and you don't seem to be able to do what I'm about to tell you, you can uh, reach out to your primary contact. So the person on Rock Chalk Central who's listed as your primary contact, um, oftentimes one of the uh, officers or leaders, oftentimes a president or an advisor, uh, or you can reach out to Silk. You can definitely reach out to Silk staff at Silkfront at ku.edu, not only for this, but pretty much any question you have, set, uh, email that account and we will try absolutely our hardest to find you an answer, okay? And we can help you figure out how to get access to the event stuff. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through the logistics of this and then hopefully have time to briefly show you what it actually looks like on the site. All right, so you would be logging into rockshockcentral.ku.edu using your online ID and password. You've already set up your page. So you're, you're gonna be, uh, to manage your organization, you're going to expand the switchboard via, there's an icon in the upper left-hand corner and I'll show you. All right, you'll find your organization. You will click the icon and select events. Then you will, click, you will click on the blue create event button in the top right and enter a bunch of information uh, that will, it will force you to enter it. There's a little red asterisk that won't let you go to the next page without filling it in. So title, theme, description, location, date, time. Uh, it, there's uh, the opportunity to do uh, in an in in-person listing location and even include an address that will pop up a Google map. I'm going to show you that in a second um, or an online location. And you can input like a Zoom link or a Teams link and a passcode, all that information right in there. Uh, once you add the location and choose a map, um, include any links, 
then you'll cust then you'll have the opportunity to customize some RSVP settings, and then you'll have the option to enable event ratings. These are all really exciting things that don't worry, I will show you. And it also, uh, in case it wasn't made clear, we are recording this session, and we do plan to post it to our training archive website uh, within the week. So you'll be able to review this, and we're happy to send additional slides. And or if you want a deep dive in any of this material, where you want a lot more information and a step-by-step -step walkthrough, that's when you schedule that silk workshop with a spot and we will happily walk you through absolutely everything you could your heart could desire okay so uh and then you'll get to choose a cover photo and then you get one more page to review your submission and making sure that uh after you select whether you want to opt into our newsletter, we'll go over that again in a second. Um, on the final page, there is a submit button that you need to make sure you hit. Um, sometimes that trips people up. They think they've already submitted, but you need to make sure you hit that submit button to get a uh, confirmation and the staff will review your event and you'll receive notification of the status of your submission via a Rock Chalk Central email, okay? So the screen didn't share when we were presenting about how to create an event on Rock Chalk Central. So I'm gonna walk you through now. So go to Rock Chalk Central, this is the homepage. And then you'll click um, this hamburger button up at the top left and you'll be able to see all your organizations. Now this looks a little bit different than yours will because I'm in, in admin mode, but um, I'm gonna to go to the organization that I wanna create an event for. So I'm gonna to go to the Student Development and Leadership Center and then I'll click the cog and it'll open up here and I'll go to events. Now, this is also how you can look at all the events that you did before. So we can look at our training day and see how many people, like, and, and this is where you can also review all of the data that you got from a certain event. So it's just the same page. So you will create an event and it'll walk you through all that. But um, I'm going to go ahead and just open this um, event that was already made so that you can we can just walk through it and I won't have to fill out anything. So... Um, you, so you wouldn't have to do any of this because that you would just click create an event. So first you'll put the event title, you know, make sure that that's attention grabbing, um, you know, and self-explanatory because you're not, the description's not always going to be there when presented on things like people might have to, um, click to see more. So just make sure that that title really grabs them and, um, mark the theme. This is really important to, um, actually put something that you think is important here because it can be sorted. So people can sort on Rockstar Central and on the Quirk app to see, to find your event. So if someone's wanting to do some sort of service opportunity and maybe they're not a part of your club already, they could find your event based off this. So make sure that you um, select a theme and add a good description. Um, again, that's something to kind of catch people's eye, you know, maybe include how people can get more information um or like you know follow you on instagram and all that okay so you can do so make sure you put the date time all that and you can also um put an online location on here so you can put the link to your zoom meeting or whatever if you're going to do a hybrid event or an online event you can also do um the location and it'll show up as like a little map on the quirk app and stuff too to show um, on the Quirk app, you can search by events near me. So just make sure you put that accurate location in. Event visibility, you can toggle this down and decide. So you can do by invited users only, organization members, and then like the public, students and staff at Rock Chalk Central. So kind of up to you who your target audience is. You know, for organizations I was a part of, I didn't, I was open to having people from the Jayhawk community stop by, but I didn't know that I necessarily was targeting the public. So I just had students and staff, and I think that's a great place for most organizations. But um, for instance, I know like an organization, for instance, if you have like a, a meeting that's just your members and you're not looking for anyone outside it, you can just do organization members and they're the only ones who will be able to view it. So it's really cool. You can use this for internal use as well. So if you had an executive meeting, you could also just invite users and they're, they'd be the only ones to see it. So really cool. Okay, so then you can um, also select these. These are relevant to you. Um, now, you can also please utilize these. These are, are not required, but on the Quark app, which we will cover later in this video, 
you can sort by category and um, by perk. And so all the freshmen this year were taught, you know, that they, they, they get this app, this Cork app, you can search, like, this is where you can see all the free food on campus and all the, you know, free stuff. So they were explicitly taught how to do, to search like this. So you can search by free food and quirk. And so make sure if you have anything like this, uh, mark it. But also the categories, um, again, you know, it's not, don't worry if you don't have free stuff, it's all good. People can still sort by category and it can still be effective. So make sure you mark these. So, you know, if you have um, something like leadership development, then that might be something that someone's going to search for. So, um, and then attend. So make sure you mark that. Okay. So um, this is not anything that you need to fill out, but it can be a really useful tool. You can choose who can RSVP. Um, so those are the options. And you can also limit you know, the number of people who can attend. But what's really cool is that you can have these questions that people get beforehand. So if anyone RSVPs, they'll be automatically sent an email with the questions that you can create. So you could utilize this by, you know, for instance, if you wanted to have food, then you could ask them, you know, to submit any sort of dietary restrictions or, um, you know, if they, if you wanted them to vote on the food that was going to be there or something like that, you could get their input before the meeting. So it's a really useful feature. But again, you can skip this page if you don't think this is relevant to you. You can just leave those settings as is. Okay, um, this is the same thing, but for post-event feedback. So you can um, send the people who attended your event um, these event evaluation questions. So that could be really useful too, to see if, you know, if, if they felt that your meeting was productive or if they had any, if you want to get any sort of input from them. Okay. So um, upload a photo, it has some pretty weird dimensions here. Um, so just make sure you kind of play with that and make sure like it doesn't crop weird. Um, just be aware that like Rock Talk Central is kind of weird about that cropping. Um, make like this photo is what's gonna be um, advertised, like what they can see on Quirk and what they can see on, immediately on Rock Talk Central. So, make sure that this has all the important information. Um, you know, the name of your club, the um, event, time, place, location, or that's <laughs> place and location. Um, but, you know, and uh, all just all that important stuff, the date, that's the word I was looking for. So just make sure to have all that on there. Um, and, but make, at the same time, don't make it too busy, so. Um, I recommend that you use Canva for this, which I will go into detail later about how to use that, but it's just, it, it just makes your cover photo just ridiculously easy. It's not going to be um, an obstacle for you at, at all. Okay, so now this is not going to show up for you. This is because I'm in admin mode, so um, disregard. So um, this is the very last thing you need to do. So it talks about the newsletter, and I will go into more detail about this but you can choose if you'd like to be featured in our newsletter. And all you have to do to do this, to just get this extra promotion for your club and your event is click yes, and then upload the file. Like, because, you know, like I said, the um, cover photo on Rock Truck Central has weird cropping. So you can, if there's like a cuter version or like that you prefer the size of, you can just upload that file right here and I'll put it in the newsletter. So it's super cool. Um, and make sure that you create your event at least a week prior if you want to be in the newsletter. So, um, because I send it out every Wednesday. So, uh, Wednesday morning. So just make sure that, you know, it's best to, I would just even submit stuff, um, you know, two weeks in advance. I mean, that's, you know, but at, le at least one week so that you can make sure to get in. Okay. And then, It'll have you review everything, and um, then it will not say this. This is because I'm in admin mode, and then click submit. That's one of the biggest things here. Um, people will get to the screen, and it just kind of seems like you're done, but you have to make sure to click submit, and then you'll be done. So that is how you create an event on Rock Chalk Central. As long as your event is in Rock Chalk Central, it will automatically show up in the Cork app. So 
Uh, because you are all here, I imagine that you downloaded the Cork app and you got your event pass. Okay, so feel free to follow along here. If you want to like open your Cork app, if you haven't played with it before and you want to look at it while I'm talking about it, please feel free to do so. I want you to get as comfortable with it as you possibly can. Um, we're really trying to make sure students know about this awesome resource that everybody can download for free, right? So uh, the Cork app, right? We're going to go over the app. I'm going to show you how to use it in conjunction with the event check-in app if you would like to. All right, again, event checking app, it's an attendance tracking app. If it's not of use to you, it's not of use to you. Don't even want to worry about it. So this is where I'd be like, hey, if you haven't downloaded it, please download that one. And if you want to play with the event check-in app, you'll want to download that one, okay? But again, we can do this after the presentation if you would like, happy to stick around and show you some more. All right, so you downloaded the app, you pick a campus, you pick KU, you set, you select sign in, you use your single sign on, right? Just like you do with Rock Chalk Central. And then you're in the main menu. Um, and you're gonna see that uh, it has events and your event pass, as you all know, which you can also PS save to your wallet in Apple or uh, I believe Google Play also has that option. Um, you can search for student organizations. You click on organizations, you'll see the same page that is in Rock Chalk Central. So you can find all the student orgs right in the palm of your hand just like uh, on Rock Chalk Central. And you can scroll through them, you can click on them, you'll see the same information, okay? Um, you'll see the, you can filter um, by categories uh, for the orgs, they're listed alphabetically. You can search them, okay? So that's a really great way to, to look for orgs. Um, and you can even join right there in the app. Like if a new student wants to request to join an org, they can do that right there in the app. Um, they can find more information about the org, all sorts of stuff. Then we go back to events in the main menu, okay? You can filter your events. You can filter them by things you've already RSVP'd to, my events, campus events, nearby events by location, okay? So that's gonna be, uh, if you, you know, scrolling through there, you're gonna see all the stuff. These are all, everything is up from Rock Chalk Central. So if you get your event in Rock Chalk Central, it's showing up on here, okay? And please know that all the new and incoming students this year, they were they were trained on this okay so this is you want some new members you want new folks to join your group you're definitely going to want to get your events on rock chalk central and uh so they'll show up in the cork app because this is where we're training new and incoming students to look for things okay you can also select filters right and there's that free food again okay very fun filter free stuff you know i'm sure if your org's got things to give away you want students to know okay uh, if you have RSVP'd to an event, either on Rock, Ch Rock Chalk Central or in the Cork app, on the My tab, it'll show up. So, like, you can go through, you know, several weeks of events and be like, oh, I like this. I'm going to I'm gonna go to that thing. I'm going to go to that thing. I'm going to go to that thing. And you've RSVP'd. And then you can just go to your My tab and be like, where am I supposed to be today? Oh, I'm supposed to be at this event at five. I'd better hurry up. And you can click on the event. All right. Um, it'll also, uh, you can do nearby and you can actually see a map. Uh, so that can you can I believe you can drill down on it so it does get it does get closer than just that like giant view right there okay all right so as we were talking about with the organization pages just to give you a more information on that um right in there when you click on an organization page you can contact the org right there in the app um it'll send a message to the primary contact of that org and hopefully that student will respond <laughs> um and so you can see you can fill that out and what you're interested in talking about right for an event, if you click on any of those individual events, um, you can, uh, you know, add it to your calendar, which is pretty sweet, right? An RSVP right there, awesome, which then also adds it to your My Event page, okay? If there's an online location, the link is there, description, all that information, um, scroll down, there can be hyperlinks to stuff, all the co-hosted organizations are listed down there, okay? And if you were to add it to your calendar, it would like show up if, in, if you're using an iPhone, for example, um, like this to just, you know, pop it up. And then do you want to add it? Add it. That easy. Okay. Questions so far? Yeah. Yeah, the app is, is strictly for searching orgs and uh, event information. Yeah, community service hours are, are, are still only in the website. <laughs> yeah. Did you remember your question? <laughs> yeah. yeah. If the organization wants to prepare a report by the end of the semester about all the events, so then you have to do that by processing or all the job. Um, you mean like like download a, a report of yeah, all the events the that whole event that the organization has been doing for the whole number. Yeah, so not in Cork, 
but in Rock Chalk Central, yes. Um, so if if that's something that you wanted to do, you could, uh, you know, you you could find um like all your events are going to stay in there. Like there's stuff for years, so it's all going to stay in there. You can search by certain filters, certain time frames. So if you just want to have like you know uh, August to December, um, you put that in there and be like all those events, and then you can uh you know you can like if you're if you're wanting like to print it out or something like that if you need it in a particular way um you know reach out to silk and we can see if we can help you more specifically but you should be able to like just see it right there uh in, in on your page does that make sense yeah okay any other questions before we move along anything online no fabulous all right so i'm going to go through this really quickly because it won't be applicable to everybody but should you want to use the event check check in app it is also free Okay, anybody can download it. It's literally called Event Check-in App. Event Check-in App, yes, okay. So uh, what you would do is you download the Event Check-in App and you log in just like with the Cork app, just like with Rock Truck Central. This is how it knows you. Um, you go to your event on Rock Truck Central, you find the access code, okay? I'm showing you right here where it is in your event page, your event details page. It'll, uh, the, the check-in app will ask you for the, the code for the event. You put that in, it's ready to go. It's ready to scan. So all you need are people's event passes that they show you, and you need a phone or an iPad or something with a camera to scan that just like we did, okay? Right, so again, you open it, you put, you, you put in the event code, you log in. It'll say, is this the event? You'd be like, yep, start scanning. And um, then you can scan people's QR code uh, and it will show the person will pop up, their name will pop up. Um, and it'll say if they, if you had an RSVP set up and you wanted them to RSVP, it'll say whether they did or not. They'll say no or yes. Um, if they were particularly invited, it'll say that, but then you can just click done, check them in, good to go, right? So if somebody did not have a pass, so you may have seen down here, if it opens up, it's no pass. No problem. So let's say they forgot their phone. They broke their phone that day. And this is already like the worst thing ever. So now you've asked them for their phone and they're 10 times more miserable. Be like, it's no worries. It's no worries. We're going to, we're going to figure this out. I'm so sorry you lost your phone. That's a whole other thing, but we can still get you checked into this event. Okay. So no pass, no problem. Uh, just ask for their uh, single sign on um, email and you plug it right in there. Validate. They will pop up. Okay, they'll pop up, you'll check them in manually, no big deal. A little more time consuming, but not a problem, not a problem, and there you have it, okay? If you had some like really hype event that has limited attendance, like you can't, you know, for some reason you can't fit more than a certain number of people in the space, you can even um, have a, you can even check people out and then like let more people in as if it's like some super hype bar event, I don't know, but you can, <laughs> that is an option. <laughs> All right, then after your event, like I said before and showed you before, you go to your track attendance, you export your list, and then you have all those people that you can email, thank them, offer them to reach out, remind them to follow you on social media, come to this next event, all that jazz. Or for example, if you're uh, tracking community service, you'd be able to, um, help them figure out, you know, be able to track that information of their community service hours and things they attended and whatnot, okay? Any questions about how to get your events rolling? No? Fabulous. All right. Then we are gonna jump right along and uh, our awesome communication specialist, Emily McBride, is gonna come up here and talk to you about social media and your student organization, okay? So think, think, think about all exciting things and remember to tag Silk, we will repost you. Right. So now we're gonna discuss social media. Okay, so um, we're gonna go over some best practices for your organization, how you can promote events in your organization, the newsletter, and then Canva, Linktree, and Hootsuite. Okay, so, you know, um, most of us here have grown up with social media, so you know you already know how you can use it effectively. But um, just to kind of go over it, you can utilize it to recruit new members, communicate with current members and alumni, marketing, advocating for you know something that your organization cares about, and informing. Okay, so strategy. 
Be strategic. Before you create your, your social accounts and begin posting, consider building a strategy that outlines your organization's social media goals, audience, voice, platforms, and management processes. So just kind of think about who your target audience is. For instance, you know, if you are um, a... If, if your members are predominantly grad students and then like grad students who are maybe um, older than um, whatever, maybe they might prefer Facebook or another platform over Instagram. So just to kind of think about who your target audience is and how that's going to impact where you are promoting your club. So um, just kind of think about stuff like that. Um, and also, you know, think about who will manage the accounts and what is the process for transitioning ownership? Because one thing, you know, this happens every year, someone graduates and they were the only ones with the password for their club. And then the, that club no longer has access to their social media. And sometimes, you know, especially like, like for instance, after COVID, those students graduated and then the club was um, gone for a few years and no one was active. And then by the time someone wants to restart it, no one even knows who was the per like the, the person who graduated with that password. So there's no way to contact them and no way to access. They have to start over from scratch. So, you know, I recommend that you create a Microsoft Teams and then it's just for your exec and you can put all of that information in there, like your passwords and your you know bank statements and everything important. I also like to have my uh, my board write like little letters to who like the next person who um, would go to them but I kind of made it more like what do you do each year what do you do each semester each month each week and then if applicable each day like as in your role so that like whoever is coming into that role can clearly see their task and like other important information and contacts on their sheet so just put everything important onto Microsoft Teams and then once you're no longer a part of it, you can have like you set the new president as like the owner of it and they can add in new exec members and then you can remove yourself. So it's perfect. Um, so I recommend that as the best way. Okay, so accuracy. Be consistent with your handle and brand logo across social media platforms. So ours is KU underscore silk on everything. So it's so easy, I can say that. And you can find us now on Instagram and Twitter just from me saying that one time instead of us being, you know, KU without an underscore silk somewhere else. So just be consistent and try to get that um, same username across all these platforms. Um, list the time, date, and location of an event and the caption of every post pertaining to that event. You know, it sounds obvious, but that's something that's forgotten a lot. So just make sure to include that. Canva is a great resource for ensuring brand consistency in your marketing materials. So um, I'm going to go into a little tutorial for that later. So we can go into detail about how that can best be utilized, but um, definitely use that. And it, it's so easy. Um, and then obviously you just fact check and spell check before you post. So um, let's see, be active. Rather than spreading yourself too thin across every available social network, you know, just choose you know one or two platforms that you think um, would be best. So for most organizations, I recommend Instagram. I think, you know, that is where people know to go for school related things. I think that's how most people are reaching them. So even if TikTok is like the most popular platform, then, you know, I don't think that's necessarily where people are going for their organization information. So um, Instagram is a really useful platform in this way. So um, that's the one that I would recommend and then you can do more beyond that but just at least have an Instagram so um but that's up to you you choose the platforms you think would work best um there's also things like Hootsuite which um, can schedule content so if you you know because you should probably post you know at least once a week so that people know that your account is active and they stay engaged so if that's something that your social media person doesn't, or you might not even have a social media person. So you just don't have time for that. Like, especially maybe you had to post on a Wednesday and that's the day that you have your exam. So if you use Hootsuite and I can show you that as well, it's, um, you can just put that in. Maybe you're not busy on Sunday. That's the Sunday before. So you can go ahead and make the post on Hootsuite 
and it will automatically post it for you Wednesday at whatever time that you need. So super cool. Last but not least, make sure to use calls to action on every post. So post with a purpose. Um, so if, if there's a post where you're trying to get people to go to your event, tell them to go to your event. If there's, you know, maybe that's not the, the most upcoming thing, then, you know, send them to um, say like, you know, stay tuned for more or, you know, leave a comment about this or um, go to our link tree to fill out this form, you know, just just give them a reason um, for that post each time. So if you're posting a picture of after your event, so the event already happened and then um, just give them, like tell them the, the next thing, like make sure you stop by, like, you know, like, like we had a great event last night, uh, make sure you stop by next Tuesday or whatever. And then obviously get the date and all that information. Um, okay. Interaction. So schedule posts for peak activity times among students. Um, so that could vary. You can think about, especially if you have members that are um, in a certain demographic that you know that they're, they're going to be busy at certain times. For instance, like if you had, uh, if your group is like political leaning or um, advocacy, then you might have some overlap with people who are in student senate and student senate is you know like Wednesday nights or something so maybe if that if you urgently need them to see something on your story you know that that's not going to be a good time to post so just think about that um, and take that into consideration um, tag people and utilize stories to encourage engagement so tag the students in your pictures tag organizations that are relevant to you, tag organizations that aren't relevant to you, tag departments, whatever you think. Um, it's really cool. Offices will often support you too. And definitely if you tag us, I'm going to repost you every time. So at KU underscore Silk, I'm going to repost you to our stories on Instagram when you tag. So that's like one way because we can put that out to all of our followers. So it's really cool. Um, but make sure that you foster a relationship with these organizations when you're tagging them. You know, don't just tag them when you need them. Also go and like their posts, comment on their posts of their, you know, whatever, and share their things, and especially if you have similar audiences. So that, like, I know that um, the finance clubs, there's finance club and women in finance are really good about this. They um, hype each other up, but also like they hype up like this silk account for some reason on every post and so it's so cool and um definitely fosters a great relationship with like between them but other clubs too like I, I know women in finance was hyping up um the graduate geology association last year <laughs> so there's probably not too much crossover there but it's really it's really cool that they do that um and I think you know that that helps spread the word for other clubs and and boost them so just make sure you do that and, um, you know, do the same to, to us if you want. <laughs> but I mean, either way, we're going to support you because that's what we're here for. So just uh, make sure to utilize that. Um, but also make sure to be responsive. So, you know, with social media and kind of this post pandemic change, you know, this is one of the ways that students are getting connected to organizations. This is one of the, like, the way basically is online. So just kind of know that, that like some, the only way they're getting this information is here. So um, respond to comments, you know, be fast about it. If you can uh, respond to DMs, you know, that's one thing I set the, our profile to like, there's like a, a special button where it just automatically like says um, that, you know, message us or something like that and, or contact us. And so I, that I've found that I talk to more organizations now than I, than we did before because people feel more comfortable just DMing in a casual setting instead of email. So just know that more students might reach out for interest now through DM and DMs. So definitely regularly check that. Okay. So as soon as you host your event, then it's going to automatically appear. Well, no we had to approve it. <laughs> but then it's gonna appear on Rock Talk Central and on the Cork app. So it's super cool um, because, you know, this is just another place that people can find your events. Okay, so um, we already went over how 
like marking perks and stuff can be used. So that'll show up on the Quark app. Like they can literally filter by these perks. So um, it's really cool. Um, let's see. And so just make sure you utilize that feature. Okay, so event club and event and club promotion. Um, tag at KU underscore silk on Instagram. And then I'm, I'll repost your posts and stories and, and then that will go to our story. However, we can also post something kind of like this is what we recently did for KU Beekeeping Club. And um, we can just post a little bit about your organization. Here's some like really good quotes that they provided, you know, for why someone should join. There's upcoming events and then, you know, how, like how to join or whatever. Um, so yeah, and look, here's finance hyping me up in the comments here and hyping up bee beekeeping. <laughs> so really cute. So anyway, um, you can, if you want to get your club featured like this, because this is a great way we, you know, we, um, can promote your club. So you can feel free to just DM me, email. Um, there's also, you can submit to the organization spotlight on Rock Talk Central. The link is also in our bio on Instagram so where you can do that. And I would love to feature you. So especially once you get some good pictures of your organization that are really going to appeal to people, let's do it. Um, yeah, and just make sure to follow us as well, because I'm gonna, I post a bunch of stuff like um, resources for student organizations, but also just events happening around campus each week. And that can always be found in our bio and those resources can be found in our bio. So um, I do think that our page is a good one to follow. Okay, so our newsletter, you know, um, as I mentioned before, is um, super easy to opt into. Literally at the end of your event submission, just select yes, upload a file, and then boom. Um, if as long as your event's approved and like that your um, the file you uploaded is appropriate, then I'm going to put it in our newsletter. And um, just make sure that you do that a week in advance, and it's um, posted every Wednesday. So just think about um, like your event. You might be doing it a week in event in advance, but um, well, actually that would work no matter what. If, as long as it's a week in advance. But let's say that you're doing it the week before it goes out. If you submitted one on a Thursday and it was supposed to be for the next, like the event is going to be next Tuesday, that's not going to make it in any newsletter. So just be thinking about that. So at least a week before, and I send it out on Wednesdays. Oopsies. Okay. So hello. Let's go to Canva. Okay, so um, this is Canva. We do have the pro version, but I use the free version for my organizations and it's like phenomenal. Like, it, I mean, they don't even realize how much they could potentially charge here because their free version is spectacular. So um, don't hesitate to use it. Like you can see this, this little crown here kind of marks stuff that is um, the premium version. So uh, most of it is not. Okay, so if you can choose what you can design. So if you wanted, if there's certain things that you can look up, feel free to do that. But we can just go to social media here. So then I can go, they have some different options here that they suggest, but I already know that I want to post on Instagram. And then let's say I want to do a story. So then, oops, just kidding. Um, let's do, okay. Um, so it'll show you some different options for, and you can like see all. So here are just some templates that you can start with. So they're super cute and um, easy to change for your organization. So you can just choose one you think is cute. Okay, just kidding. So it expanded. Okay, so you can like scroll around and see more options. I guess it lost, okay, here we go. So if I think this one's cute, I can just take it and I'll just say, I don't know, we'll just pretend I've been talking about, oh, 
I've been talking about finance, so we'll do a finance one. So. Okay, so. Um, you can literally just put all this information in so quickly. And, um, you know, obviously this wouldn't be relevant to women, women in finance, so then you could easily move stuff around or, um, you know, upload your own pictures. So it's really cool. Um, Canva has its own thing. Let me see. Where you can learn how to use it. So just feel free, like learn on here in Help Center and it, it, it kind of breaks down how you can use it. So de definitely look at that, how you can best utilize it. But to me, it was pretty self-explanatory. Um, so just play around with that. Let's just move that to trash before I forget. Okay, so um, definitely utilize Canva because you can just plug and chug. Okay. Okay, well, I guess we're not, we're not gonna go back to full screen, I guess. Okay, so that was that. Um, now, Linktree. Let, this is such a cool thing. So Linktree is basically like, it, you can easily create your own little website thing that is just, I mean, a website is like too big of a word, but it's just a page that has all of your links right in one. And so, um, you can put that link in that link spot on your bio. So, you know, your link, like there's only one spot for one link on Instagram. So, you know, that you might have like some sort of, uh, let's say that you're trying to um, get people to join your board. So you have some sort of form for an application. And so that's something that you need to have in your bio right then, but maybe you have some ongoing thing for like the, the form to how to join your club or something that that's not something you always like to keep in your bio. So it would suck to only be able to have one link there. So if you use Linktree, then it can have all of these links in one place. And what's really cool about it is you can edit them and move them around um, as needed. So for instance, for the student organization training day, I had that um, at the very top of our page because that was the most relevant. And then after that event ended, I deleted it. So um, super easy and that, so it was really nice because people could see right here, um, that was like the first thing they saw because that was the most relevant. And then I could just move it when it, when it was no longer that. So um, it's a really, really helpful use uh, resource. And um, we have the free version. So you're limited on exactly like what yours can look like, but um, the functionality of it is really cool. So um, yeah. Definitely get Linktree. Okay, Hootsuite, I mentioned that. That's how you can kind of create posts on different things. So like as it's showing, you can have Instagram, Twitter, and you post at like the same post at the same time. So if I had a post and I put it in Hootsuite and I had the caption already, so then it would it would show it on Instagram and it'd say, yep, looks good, good to post. And then maybe it'd flag it on for Twitter and it'd say, you know, Twitter has this character count you you went a little bit over. And so then it lets me just edit it for Twitter. And then I can say, all right, post that on Wednesday at 3 p.m. And then it'd do that for me. So then it's out of my hair. I don't have to worry about it. So it's really cool. Um, Money time. So thank you so much, Emily. All right. And again, any of this information, you want another deep dive, you want to go over it again, you have more specific questions, you want to be walked through how to use Canva, you want somebody to sit with you and like come up with templates and whatnot, we can do that. Just book a Silk workshop, book a meeting with a spot, happy to do that with you, okay? Uh, all these resources are available over and over again. So this is just going to be a, a brief overview of some funding resources. This is by no means an exhaustive list. This is not all of them. OK, there are other extensive fundraising things that orgs can do uh, should you have the capacity to do so. Um, and if we want to know more about more extensive fundraising in particular, uh, definitely book a meeting with um, with a spot. Say that specifically what you want to talk about and we can go over that with you. Like right now, I'm not going to talk about uh, we're not going to talk about setting up SOFAs accounts. We're not going to talk about setting up bank accounts. We're not going to talk about um, uh 
getting nonprofit status and a tax ID and percentage nights and like that. We're not going to talk about that right now. If your org becomes interested in that, please reach out to us, book a meeting, happy to walk you through it. All right. But these, these resources here um, are resources that every student organization can take advantage of. Every registered student organization um, that qualifies can take advantage of these resources without having a bank account, without have doing any uh, like separate anything. Um, it is all made very easy for you. Okay. <laughs> now you're going to potentially argue with me, student senate funding, what's easy about that? But <laughs> um, I promise once you know uh, what you know, processes you have to go through, the hurdles are not that big, okay? So Student Senate, your student body government, all right, actually oversees millions of dollars. You know that lovely required campus fee that you all pay to the tune of about $500 a semester? Well, believe it or not, your Student Senate governs that money. So if you have any interest in having a say in how that money is spent and what is done with it, please join Student Senate. <laughs> I can't emphasize that enough. There are lots of empty seats. Anybody interested can participate in student government, okay? And you can have a say in how all of that money, uh, like somewhere over $23 million a, a, a year is, is allocated, okay? This is a, it's a very big deal. Please consider joining. As part of that, uh, a, fun, a portion of that funds goes directly to Student Senate to distribute to student organizations, okay? In the form of the most common forms are Wednesday night um, general funding, which is their unallocated account that they give out on a biweekly basis at their full student assembly meetings, okay? Uh, and you can apply for that ongoing throughout the school year. Okay? Then there's also the DEI fund, diversity, equity, and inclusion. So that's gonna be uh, for events and orgs that are focused on a diversity, multicultural uh, focus, Okay, um, potentially like an affinity group, that kind of thing. All right, you can request specific funding uh, that has slightly different stipulations. And again, we can go over that more in detail should you get to that point. And then there's LINE, DEI LINE, very similar, just with that DEI focus, okay? LINE, BLOCK, and EOF, and there's some other smaller ones in there, okay? Those are going to be for orgs that are planning stuff over a year in advance, okay? So it's there, there are, uh, almost 500 student organizations on campus. Some have been around for a really long time. And as they have institutionalized and gotten better and better administratively of transitioning and keeping track of things, they uh, host the same event or plan the same things year in, year out, year in, year out. Think, um, for example, SUA is the big event. Anybody familiar with that? SUA is the big event, maybe some nods, maybe. Okay, that event happens year in, year out, year in, year out. So they can go to Senate a year in advance and have a budget already outlined and say, can we have the money uh, pre-allocated for next year for this particular event? And then uh, it goes through a, a vetting process. It is overseen by Senate and you can become a part of it if you'd like to, um, and they can be granted that money so that the next year when the year starts on the school year starts, they can just go to Senate and be like, okay, we already, you already gave us that money. Um, we're ready to go. Here's the things you want to buy. So you don't even have to like, you know, don't, don't pass go. Don't you just keep going. You just, Jump start right into it. Okay. So, but that again is for orgs that are able to plan that far in advance. So, if any of that is sounds like you and your group, again, book a, bus, a meeting with a spot and we can go over that. Okay. So, uh, these are just the pieces of information that if you go to these websites, this will be helpful to you. If you want to see the breakdown of all of the different fees uh, and all of the different uh, funding streams from Student Senate that you like what what is this particular fund who can apply for that what is it for if you want to know all those details you can go to the fee oversight page and it'll detail all the different funding sources and you can read about what each one is if you'd like to right um, so and to apply for funding you can visit the Student Senate website and uh, under their funding and there's an apply page um, or you can simply email the Student Senate treasurer at this email address right here. And you can ask them, hey, this is my org. Um, we're registered for the year. We have this event that we wanna put on. And we could really use some money. Can you help us figure out how to apply for uh, Senate funding to cover the costs? Okay, now Senate does have restrictions on what the money can and cannot be used for. So it's gonna be very important for you to potentially review that in advance on their website, or this treasurer is likely to send you that link um, 
of lengthy things that you can and cannot do with their money. But a brief overview, guidelines generally, um, your organization or at the very minimum, the event must be open to all KU students in order to receive funding from Student Senate. Okay, your organization needs to be registered with the Student Involvement and Leadership Center, SILK, um, and you, it needs to have no academic standards or membership dues um, uh, pertaining to the event. Um, and then uh, it's important to note, I think, that all qualified organizations that meet those that threshold can request $100 every year to spend on uh, ex expenses. I say approved, that just means like within Senate rules. Um, you, you without question, you can just like ask, hey, I want my hundred dollars, and they just have like a preform bill that they submit, and it'll take a couple weeks to go through. Um, but you can just ask for your hundred dollars, uh, and then you can use it on anything that that they allow for spending. You don't have to pre-establish what event it's for uh, or anything like that. The idea is that that is that hundred dollars is available to any org. Um, it's typically used for office supplies, printing costs. Um, advertising, that kind of thing, okay? Uh, but I encourage every student organization at the bare minimum, you don't know what you're gonna do, at least reach out to the treasurer and initiate your request of your $100. So how Senate funding works, you're gonna wanna plan to request it more than four weeks out because it is a slow process, okay? So first you gotta get in touch with them, then you gotta tell them what they what you want, find out what you can get, they have to make the bill, then they have to submit it to two councils, it has to be approved by two councils one week, then it goes to the full student assembly the next week, and if that's approved, then we can finally start working toward getting you your money. But um, if your event is happening before we can get to that stretch all the way through, you're not gonna get the money because the event has to be happening after all of this process has to go through. So that's why I advise at least four weeks in advance. Okay, more if you can. All right, so you're not stressed about it. Okay, um, and if you, uh, again, you, like I said, you're gonna wanna review the funding rules to determine eligible expenses. Um, and uh, you can certainly email student senate with any questions, or again, request a silk workshop to go over any Senate funding specifics, okay? Um, because there are a lot of details that we're not going to cover right now. Uh, so I encourage you to uh, peruse their website. They have been, it's not completely updated, but they have been working actively on updating a lot of it. So a lot of this information, including funding guidelines are on there. Um, and there's a very long list of things that can and cannot be funded. Okay. So uh, for, uh, for example, travel, there are like a, a couple of exceptions carved out. Um, uh, for a couple of groups, but otherwise travel is not covered for, ex as an example. So there are, are things like that, you know, there's specific restrictions on food. There's even a fun little restriction on like the promo giveaway items. They don't necessarily really want to fund that for you. And they base that off of, um, anything that's less than $50 that can walk out of a room. They don't fund, like it literally says that. So um, there are some funny things like that. So if you want more details, read it or ask. So I apologize. I do need to cough. <laughs> I'm okay. Keeping it up here. Okay. So any questions about that Senate stuff there? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Thank you for the promo and the shout out. Appreciate it. Um, really encourage you all to get involved in that or, uh, you know, tell other people about it. I feel like, you know, not enough students know where their money goes and that you can actually be involved in the process of determining how it gets allocated because it's the student senate councils and the full assembly who review each request for funding and determine whether or not to give it to an org okay so you can also be not only the org asking for money but you can be on the other side of the table determining uh what money an org gets um you can put if you don't like if you don't like the rules you don't like the funding rules get involved in senate and you might be able to help change them okay so uh, i really encourage you all to do that all right now we're going to briefly talk about endowment funding. Okay, so um, 
it lives in a little mysterious land called endowment on the west side of campus but there is a particular program called launch ku and so i'm going to start this little vid video but endowment has initiated a program um that's been going for a few years now that is basically crowdfunding as is anybody unfamiliar with crowdfunding Right. Okay. So, uh, for example, a lot of people will create a website where they ask, like, I'm getting um, this surgery or I'm having this event. Does anybody want to support it? You can donate to me and my event. Or let's say you're running a race for cancer or something like that. Does anybody want to donate to my participation in a race? Um, put pooling uh, people's donations together. That's crowdfunding. Right. So it's a very popular thing these days. There's lots of crowdfunding all over the place. People asking money for X, Y, Z things. You can crowdfund startups. You can crowdfund. Yeah. Um, you know, philanthropic ventures. Uh, you can crowdfund your own surgery. So many things. So uh, uh, the university has also created a process for crowdfunding uh, for student organizations. Now, it is a very time intensive um capacity necessity necessitated event uh process so you have to have you you have to be very involved and you have to uh do things on a regimented schedule they will meet with you they will walk you through all of that um but it does involve that but you can have great gains with it so let's let's see if this video will work who wants to make a difference if you have an idea for a project launch ku can help it take flight Endowment created Launch KU to help students, faculty, and staff at the University of Kansas raise funds through impactful projects through crowdfunding. You see how this works. A person with an idea shares it with friends, family, and even members of the community. When people get excited about your idea, they make a small donation. When they get really excited, they invite others to give too. Soon the goal is reached or even topped. KU Law students saw this happen when they set a $5,000 goal for their legal aid clinics. Through the power of crowdfunding, they raised close to $6,200. KU Medical Center faculty raised more than $1,500 to seed a vegetable and herb garden that promotes healthy living. Fans pitched in with $1,000 to help KU Club Baseball attend its spring training. Student researchers dug deep to raise nearly $16,000 to excavate a T-Rex skeleton in Montana. Launch KU might be right for your idea if you have a compelling story, a dollar goal, and a target audience that can help you achieve your objective. If you have questions or you're ready to get started, visit launchku.org to see how we can help your project soar. Are you a Jayhawk? No, there we go. Okay. Um, so pretty swanky video for sure, uh, but gives you a good idea about what, what is possible. But again, um, it does involve being very organized as a group and usually is very helpful to have like a, a larger group, not impossible with a smaller one if you're really committed. Um, but as they said, compelling story, compelling idea that would make people get excited, right? So that's not probably gonna be like your general body meeting, right? right? Um, but uh, Launch KU, crowdfunding platform, all student orgs and club sports can use it, you know, pending some qualifications. Um, uh, endowment utilizes students to educate the campus on philanthropy and charitable giving. Here are some other examples. <clears throat> I don't know if anybody has become familiar with CubeSat, but that student organization has been fundraising like crazy all over campus for years, um, building a Cube satellite to launch into space. Kansas is first and only. Uh, and they have done very successfully with um, Launch KU. Uh, it's a pretty cool idea to get behind, you know, uh, helping support uh, the first satellite ever launched on behalf of the state of Kansas. That's kind of fun and cool. Say that you help fund that, people can get behind that. You get the idea, right? So um, these are a couple of examples of of events that were funded and then you know they these they help you launch ku helps you build this little platform so that you can help spread the word you can help track you can help promote all that kind of stuff all right so qualifications and again if you want more details about this um uh there's going to be a person to contact and or you can talk to us about it afterward 
not only does your your advisor does need to help support you, you would need a, an account of some kind, um, but it doesn't have to be a SOFAS account, which stands for Student Organization Financial Account System. Whole other thing, if you want to have a meeting about that, uh, get in touch with us. Um, but KU Endowment can also help you set up an account with them, so you don't have to have a pre-existing thing. Uh, you need to have, like I said, a project with a compelling story, a goal you'd like to raise, an obvious audience to appeal to, you know, like who's going to be interested in launching a satellite. Like the endowment folks will help you figure that out, but you, you have to have that thing and like kind of a, an idea of who you might want to be trying to outreach to. Okay. Um, and a willing a willingness to invest time and effort, again, is really the key there. So endowment will provide the platform and training. Um, they will help you learn how to crowdfund best practices, guide you through the campaign, help you figure out how to promote, um, help you receive the donations, um, and help make it easy for donors and so you can get that money. All right, your responsibilities would be a lot of project and strategy, so that time-intensive part, providing context, um, meeting the specific due dates, Right, so if you have a hard time meeting due dates, might not be the thing for you. But if you are very due date focused, might be the perfect thing for you. All right, and then uh, it will be important. You'll you still need to be the mouthpiece, the advocate for your project. Right, so it has to be something uh, that you, like it doesn't have to be, but it's going to help if it's something you're really passionate about. If you're not passionate about it, if you don't want to sell people on it every time you turn a corner, um, it, then, then then maybe this isn't the right way. But if it is something that you feel very strongly about and you do want to take advantage of every time you're stuck in an elevator with someone, you want to tell them about it, then you should think about doing this. All right. Energetic, consistent communication. These are success tips. These are also success tips for promoting an organization in general, right? So um, being involved, uh, impact, you know, being able to show impact of the donor's support, you know, donors always want to know where did my money go? Are you able to demonstrate how it was used? Um, you know, engaging uh, with email um, is very highly effective. They'll help you get that. And it's, a, it's really helpful to have multiple people ready to do that. All right. Um, giveaways and perks. It's okay to give away experiences, invitations, project updates, gratitude, not okay to give away tangible items of monetary value that would go against the whole concept of donation, because then it would just be selling something and that's not the same. So uh, I hope that is understandable. All right, so some deadlines should this be of interest to you. Um, if you want to get in on the, the, the fall crowdfunding um, uh, cycle, you want to apply before September 23rd, so just a couple of weeks here, and you'd be crowdfunding for this fall semester. If you want to do it in the spring, it'd be applying by March 3rd to get in on that cycle. To apply, you go to uh, kuendowment.org slash launch KU application, or you are welcome to reach out to the contact who oversees the program, uh, Brenna, right there, uh, contact information, and you can also reach out to us later uh, if you missed this slide and this information and we can get it to you. All right, any questions? No? All right, so now we're gonna jump into Pepsi product and Pepsi funding. in there. I know it's been <laughs> a long presentation, but we are here at the end. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about Pepsi product and funding that is available to your student organization here on campus. Um, so because we are a Pepsi campus, we have a partnership with them and they donate money and products for use of student organizations and university departments. Sorry, I figured this out here. Okay, so how do you apply for product or funding? Uh, so Pepsi, this Pepsi program lives within the Silk office. So you can just go to the Silk website. Um, I put the web address up there at top, um, but really silk.ku.edu, you can find it easily on our main menu. These are screen grabs of what you're gonna see once you click on the Pepsi programs. Um, they are detailing the requirements to receive product or funding, how you would apply, um, what the evaluation criteria is, um, and for Pepsi funding meeting information. And to apply for either one of them, you will just click one of those blue buttons and it's gonna take you to a form on Rock Chalk Central because both of those applications are living on Rock Chalk Central. Okay, so we'll do a 
brief rundown of Pepsi product. So it's exactly what it says it is. It provides Pepsi beverages for your events. Like we have the Aquafina water and pop in the back. Those were supplied by Pepsi product. Uh, I do request that uh, your application be submitted, submitted, wow, sorry, submitted at least 10 days prior. And that is business days uh, because the union has to order the product. They do not keep it on hand. So it's really important you adhere to that deadline. Um, product is awarded based on the expected attendance for your events. And the really cool thing about the product program is that you can apply for all your events in a semester. Uh, we do not necessarily cap how many events you can be awarded product for. Um, and once approved or denied, you will receive an email from Pepsi at ku.edu. That's going to be me. Hi. <laughs> um, but you can also email any questions to pepsi at ku.edu and I will get those. So moving on to funding, again, it's exactly what it says it is. It provides monetary support for your events. Uh, these requests, I ask that they be submitted three weeks prior to your event. Like right now, we're not very busy, so we could actually shorten that time frame. You could go ahead and apply for funding. But as we get in through the semester and especially into the spring semester, we get really, really booked up. So even that three weeks might be too short of a time frame. So if you know you're going to be doing an event in the spring and want to request Pepsi funding, do it sooner rather than later. Um, I would say January sometime would be great. The form for spring semester will be open then. Uh, how this differs from product is that we do award funding to only one event per a semester. So if you're looking for funding for just a meeting that you're having, you can do that and we will award funding like if you were to get KU catering. Uh, but if you have a bigger event that semester and also want funding for that, since you already received it, we would not okay that. Um, there is documentation that is required for payments. Uh, Pepsi Fund just pays um, like any speakers or KU Catering or Jayhawk Inc. directly. Um, so we just require a few different things to process that payment. We'll let you know at the time that money is awarded and of course at any point throughout the process. So what can you use funds for? I know we touched on it a little bit, like speaker fees, guest fees. Um, you can do catering or food that does have to go through KU Catering, or you have to get that food exemption approved to use an outside vendor. Um, and, and they do offer food exemptions. Um, I know that some of our student organizations, they host events. Um, they need a certain type of food that KU Catering doesn't offer. So they will just say, yes, granted. Um, that does take a review time as well. So just be mindful of that because if you come to the Pepsi meeting, we're gonna say, hey, did you get the food exemption approved? We will also pay for printing through Jayhawk Inc. Um, and other expenses that come up for campus programs. And we typically evaluate those on a case-by-case -case basis. So what can you not use funds for? So events or student groups that are not open to all students on campus, events that charge for student attendance, events serving alcohol, um, events in which students will receive academic credit. Um, we do not pay for travel or con um, conference registration or gifts or prizes that you are looking to give out. All right, we did it. Does anybody have any questions about the Pepsi product or funding? Yep, Emily wants to add something. <laughs> okay. Just real quick for the newsletter, that goes out every Wednesday morning. So make sure you you uh, register your event at least a week in advance to make sure that you get in that newsletter ahead of your event. All right. Um, I see some of you busted out your phone. If everybody would do that, um, we are going to set up to randomly select recipients of some of the KU swag that we have in the back. Madison is working on that right now. So if you'll just take a second to complete this short survey, I think there are like five questions. Um, people online, you can also use that URL down at the bottom to complete the survey. And I think Madison will let us know once we're done. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and fill that out. Let us know how we did. 